My name is Wesley Littlefield with YourBassGuy.com, and today we're talking about how to tie and rig spinnerbaits. Spinnerbaits are one of my favorite baits to throw, especially in the springtime. It seems like they really work the best in the springtime for whatever reason. Now, there are all kinds of different variations of spinnerbaits if you didn't know. You can have your willow leaf and your Colorado and Indiana blades. I don't see any Indiana blades here. You can have painted blades or you can have gold blades, silver blades. I don't know if, oh, there's a silver blade. We've got silver blades, all kinds of different skirts. You've also got different ways to actually rig it. And so that is what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. I'd love to read in the comments below what your favorite springtime bait is. And if you guys want to know how to fish it better or rig it, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's get started. So as I mentioned, there's all kinds of different blades. And the reason for that is because each blade actually reacts differently in the water. Like a thinner willow leaf blade or Indiana blade isn't going to put off as much vibration as a uh, Colorado blade like these. And then the colors, of course, change as well with the watercolor. So painted blades, gold blades, and even your color, your skirt color all work better, like especially reds and blacks and even chartreuses in dirty water or not dirty water, but stained water. And then you can go to more translucent and gold blades and even silver blades will into in clearer water. And this is just because the fish see it better. As far as for size, you can tell that I've got some different sizes like this one here. I think they call it the Pond Magic. And it's just a little, I can't remember, I think it's a, half, a quarter ounce or something. And then I've got bigger ones that are like three quarter ounces and to a half ounce. And it's all how fast you want it to fall and also profile wise. You know, you're probably going to catch a lot more smaller fish because they can get their mouth around this a lot better than a small fish could get its mouth around this. And so it's, you know, if you're targeting bigger fish and don't want to just catch a whole bunch of little ones, a bigger spinnerbait might be what you need. Not always, but might be. You know, fishing's always got to test it out. As I was mentioning about colors, there's a wide variety of colors. I mean, as you can see here, I've just got a few out and nearly every single one of them is a different color so you can figure it out and pick out your favorites these just seem to work for me the best I actually found this one in a tree and I don't know that I've ever even thrown it but I put it out here just for an example and then you know reds springtime work really well for the red colors something to do a little bit with the crawfish that they're eating and it's just a it encourages them to bite during the springtime for some reason all right, so let's move on to trailer selection. Honestly, I don't use a lot of trailers on the spinner baits. Um, you see most guys using like a paddle tail swimmer and this just, it gives it a lot, a lot more action, a lot more vibration in the water and it will actually help it stay up in the water. So if you're fishing a reel, you need to fish a heavy head um, or heavy spinner bait, then you can put a trailer on it and it'll actually slow it down falling in the water and you can fish it a little bit slower that way. Or you can put on a little smaller trailer like what I have on this little bit smaller uh, spinner bait too. And you can still fish it pretty quick, but it also, it gives you the added vibration and action of this. It also puffs up the profile. So, you know, you can see here that it, it makes the skirt bulk up just a little bit not a lot but just enough unlike this one and this is a smaller spinner bait too but you can tell that the profile it, it looks different and sometimes that's all it takes is just a little bit different and that's what triggers a bite one last thing you can add to a spinner bait is a trailer hook and this is actually a brand new package that I just bought but we'll take it out of the package and I don't even have the tube cut so I'll just demonstrate it. If in the springtime, sometimes fish just will swipe at it and they'll just keep missing it and you'll feel them nibbling or you'll come back and you've got a missing claw or piece of your trailer and you can actually put 
a trailer hook on there and so now you've got two chances of hooking that fish and then you would cut just a piece of this tubing and put it over your hook here and once it goes over you'll just cut it I mean you don't need to cut very much and it'll just keep hitting underneath the barb and it'll keep this hook from coming off and that is a great way to catch a lot more fish when they're just literally just swiping at your bait instead of full-on committing and eating it so when you rig a plastic on to a spinner bait you want it to be as straight as possible you can see here that this little paddle tail uh, it's actually like a swim bait is what I got I tried to make it as straight as possible and that way it doesn't swim weird in the water it looks natural and everything and you know you don't have to use these uh, you see a lot of guys that use paddle tails obviously because they work so if guys aren't you know if they're not gonna use it then it probably doesn't work but you can use just about any soft plastic I would not use like a straight worm on here you know if you've got a couple a little a worm that has like a split tail then that would be good just something that has a little more action than just a straight tailed worm another thing is you don't want it too long because like I said you know fish will come up here and swipe it and just get the tail and you'll miss a lot of fish doing that so you want to you know really that's a little bit long I'd probably throw a trailer hook on here just to make sure that I'm getting all of those bites you know I have a chance to set the hook in all of those bites but most trailers are gonna work I do try to match it at least a little bit with the color of my spinnerbait you can tell here I've got like a, a natural colored more shad and this is more of like a gold shiner or anything but I mean it's close enough that it's not gonna matter now you could put this even on a black and red one if you wanted to but I do try to use I didn't rig that one very well you can tell that it's not straight and it if I was to actually go fishing with that it wouldn't swim as natural I would I actually need to fix that before I go out but as I was saying you, I do try to match somewhat of the colors but you, you know black and reds usually go good together black and blues but you can throw any trailer on there and I'm sure it'll work it's just all about testing it out a little bit all right so let's tie one of these up now everybody's got their favorite knot and honestly with a spinner bait you can use whatever knot you want to I've used the good old trusty fisherman's knot forever and never had a, a problem with never felt like it was the knots fault that I missed that fish or it broke off so all you're gonna do is run it underneath the wire pull out plenty of slack and then I just twist it I don't know six seven eight times three four five six seven eight we'll do nine and then I actually wet it down and some people like to dip it in the water I'll just stick it in my mouth and get saliva on it and now you run the tag end back through the loop that you created and cinch it down and here I'll, I usually wet it down again but for this purpose I'm not going to but I'll wet it down again as I cinch it because it'll usually get pretty hot and it could make it weak and that's it and you know obviously I would cut this tag end off I just so happen to have some clippers here and you know you, I leave maybe a quarter it just depends on how well I think that knot actually cinched down if I don't think I really got it good cinched down I'll leave a little bit more tag in so it has a little bit of room to slip but if I think I got it slipped down you know I'll trim it down to about there I wouldn't leave too much more than at least a probably a quarter of an inch just because then you run the risk of it catching something and fish seeing it and you know how that goes or the skirt catching it and hanging weird there's no telling what would happen but that that's it I mean tying it like I said I use a fisherman's knot but you can use whatever knot you want to and let's see if yeah there you go you can see just how long it needs or should be if you want to cut a little bit more you can if not that's the fisherman's knot and that's how you tie a spinnerbait onto your line
As far as fishing the spinnerbait goes, there's not a necessarily a wrong way to do it. I mean, the water temperature gets up higher, you can start really casting out and just burning it. When it's cold, the water's cold, you can reel a little bit slower. I have triggered a lot of bites off of casting it into like up against wood or up into a brush pile and bumping that spinnerbait into either off of the bottom or into that bush or tree or whatever. And I've triggered a lot of bites just by running it into stuff. And, you know, I recently heard Kevin Van Dam say, you know, he, he really actually just prefers to, to burn it. And now this was like he was out on an open shallow flat. And so you know, in real shallow water, I mean, I'm talking three foot or less. And so you cast out there and you just start burning it and those fish don't have any time to think about seeing it and they just nail it. So there's really no wrong way to fish a spinnerbait unless you're not getting bit. Then it's time to change it up or even think about changing baits. But it's really hard for me to actually put the spinnerbait down. Like I said, it's one of my favorite baits. If you guys have, you know, if you think this is a lot of information because it is, don't worry. We've got links in the description below. We've even got an article that breaks it spinnerbait rigs down. So you can use that, access that anytime that you want. And as well, don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends that way. Or I guess you don't have to, you can keep it for yourself. That way you can outfish them, but that's no fun. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, education is important, but fishing is essential.